Hi, Assalamualaikum. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about the next subtopic at point 3, Rotational Dynamics. So, in this subtopic, we have two learning outcomes. First is you should be able to define and use the moment of inertia of a uniform rigid body for sphere, cylinder, ring disc and rod. And then next one, you, you need to be able to state and use the torque. Okay, kita tengok the first one. Moment of inertia, or we use the symbol I. So, mathematically speaking, we can say that moment of inertia is the sum of the products of the mass M of each particle and the square of its respective distance R from the rotation axis ataupun kita boleh tulis sebagai i is equal to the summation of the product m and r square okay di mana uh, unit dekat sini adalah sama dengan kg meter square sebab mass adalah kg um, r adalah distance so moment of inertia adalah skala quantity so, there's no need to, to find the direction for moment of inertia because it's a scalar quantity. Okay, so this one adalah secara matematik. Okay, so untuk lebih faham, what is actually moment of inertia ni? So, this value for I here is a quantity to express a body's tendency to resist angular acceleration. So, if a body... Okay, has a higher, uh, a higher value of I, meaning that that body is prone to resist angular acceleration. So, dia lebih susah untuk, untuk dia um, rotate lah sebenarnya sebab dia resist angular acceleration. Sebab kita tahu angular acceleration ni yang menyebabkan sesuatu, sesuatu body untuk, um, untuk move lah to, to, to do the rotational motion. Okay, so there are a few factors here that affects the moment of inertia of a body. First is the mass. So the higher the mass, the higher the moment of inertia because as you can see here, I is directly proportional to M and also to R. Next one is the shape of the body. So if the body has different shape for sphere, cylinder, disc and rod. They have their own moment of inertia. Tidak akan sama. And then last one is the position of the rotation axis. Okay, so in your notes. So here there is a few diagrams here with, um, a, with a different kind of formula for each body. So, kita ada cylindrical shell, kita ada cylinder or disc, and then kita ada rod here and here, tetapi berbeza position of the rotation axis. So, untuk yang dekat sini, kita ada rotation axis dia dekat tengah, yang dekat sini pula rotation axis dia dekat tepi. So, here we have a spherical shell, and this one solid sphere. So, for each of this body, they have different formula untuk untuk moment of inertia. Usually, kalau ada soalan, dia akan bagi terus lah formula ni. But as I have mentioned before, dalam um, chapter 8, tidak akan keluar dalam exam. So, you're going to use this in your assignment only. Okay, so here, okay, apa kena mengena position of rotation ni dengan moment of inertia? So, kita um, uh, consider dekat sini shape yang sama which is the rod here so kalau dia punya um, rotation axis dekat tengah so this rod is easier for us to rotate kita akan apply force dan dia akan senang lah untuk rotate berbanding apabila rotation of axis dia dekat tepi so it will require higher force so apabila require higher force bermaksud moment of inertia juga akan tinggi sebab dia akan resist that angular acceleration. So, these are the formula here for the 
uh, for the moment of inertia. Okay, so if if the assignment nanti, kalau kamu tengok assignment, kalau dia ada um, spesifikkan menggunakan what shape, so kamu boleh rujuk dekat dalam nota lah, the formula for that. Okay, so now I want to reintroduce the torque and angular acceleration. Okay, so before this, in kinematics, in uh, not uh, not in kinematics, in at point two in equilibrium, we learn that the sum of the the sum of the force adalah sama dengan kosong dan the sum of the torque adalah sama dengan kosong. So this one is under the condition of equilibrium okay so now uh, i want to reintroduce the torque and then kita mau relate dia dengan angular acceleration okay so before this we learn in chapter 4 that according to newton's second law the sum of the force is equal to mass times width acceleration so in rotational motion pula the sum of the torque akan sama dengan moment of inertia times with the angular acceleration. Di mana angular acceleration kita boleh substitutekan in terms of tangential acceleration which is A divided by R here. Okay, so untuk um, the sign convention for this. So remember before this pun untuk yang Second law ni kan, kita buat follow, follow A, dia akan jadi positif, opposite, opposite A, dia akan jadi negatif. So, sama juga untuk yang ni. So, kalau the direction, follow the direction of angular acceleration, the torque will be positive. Kalau dia opposite, the torque will be negative. So, sebagai contoh dekat sini, kita ada this sphere. So, kita ada force on this side. So, force ni, kalau kamu tengok, dia punya direction. Untuk direction force, sebab dia ke bawah kan. So, dia ke bawah, direction dia akan jadi macam ni lah kan. Direction dia akan jadi macam ni lah. Uh, direction of the force, which is anti-clockwise. So, direction of the force here is the same with the direction of the angular acceleration. So, kalau same, maksudnya the torque of the F adalah sama dengan positive. But if the direction here is opposite with the direction of the angular acceleration, so dekat sini direction of force adalah anti-clockwise. And then direction of the torque adalah um clockwise kan so they opposite so apabila they opposite here the the direction of the torque will be negative so sekarang ni kalau ada angular acceleration kita akan ikut sign convention yang ni kita sudah tidak akan ikut yang anti clockwise so this one yang before this right anti clockwise kita cakap dia akan jadi positive clockwise uh, kita cakap dia akan jadi negatif. This one only if only for the sum of the torque sama dengan kosong and the sum of the F sama dengan kosong. Tetapi apabila kita gunakan formula ni, we follow this sign convention.